Okay, yeah. Should we do an interview a behind the scenes? <laughs> about me? Yeah, between about the my start in interview. comedy? Yeah, how'd you get started in that? Oh, got that on. That's a good thing. That's uh, live All broadcasting right. right there. That's how that works. I just feel like doing uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm quotes once I hear about you it. You do that. Pretty, 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 pretty good. Pretty good. That's about how we're going to start that. Oh, that's pretty much I... the only <laughs> quote I know. Oh, no. That and just staring people down to see if they're lying. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Yep, that's about it. Uh, there's other quotes we could say that probably aren't safe to do on here. Yep. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Between the Streams. If you're hopping over from the live Facebook feed, welcome. Uh, this is our show, our weekly show, where we talk about television and entertainment and everything going on with that, live streaming events, whatever's happening, we're going to cover it. And we want to hear what you guys want to talk about. So if you're watching via YouTube right now, go ahead and hop over there and drop in your comments. Tell us what you want to discuss. My name is Greg Nibbler. I'm Ryan Juanita. I realized last week I forgot to do that. It's very uh, important. It's very important to let everybody know who to we bring are. To put our, our names, names in there. Into the mix. Yeah, that does kind of help a little bit. Um, yeah, so Nobody we've got we, we've got so many things we want to get to. Normally, we broadcast on Fridays at two p.m. Uh, we're going live today, Wednesday at two p.m. because you are heading out of town. Yeah, yeah. Yes, where are I'm you heading? Go see the world. Oh, that's it. You're on an adventure. my oats. My oats. You're so, okay. Well, that got very detailed very fast. No, uh, a lot more just than... have a buddy in town. Oh, okay. Anyway, right. again, we've got a lot to talk about Way too about many today, details. Even way early in the week. Yes. And one of the biggest stories that yeah. I think we want to hit first is this, and I could not have been more excited about it, something I've been hoping would happen, and there were rumors that it was going to happen. Oh, been... yeah. They've been talking about it since they, since they quit. Right. But then you just figured it wasn't going to happen, and it is... Curb Your Enthusiasm is returning for its ninth season. Season nine. Um, I don't believe we have details on when that's going to be yet. Nope. We just know that uh, Larry David is bored of not doing anything and has decided <laughs> to bring the band back together, as it were. Larry David's been having kind of a comeback anyway, though, just being really on uh, Saturday Night Live and playing Bernie Sanders. Bernie he's Sanders got a pro has career. been really good for his career. So I think maybe since <laughs> that's winding down now, he's like, all right, well, there goes my gig for He Bernie also Sanders. had a hit Broadway play for a little bit there. That's right. Uh, and and then he decided that that was hard, so he quit doing that. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, the guy can do whatever he wants. He's got Seinfeld money just blowing up his bank account. Yeah, well, money is not an issue, not an I issue. don't think, for Larry's. I think he just is bored, and so he wants to write some more Curb Your Enthusiasms. He's probably done a bunch of awkward things that he can <laughs> clown on in the last few years. I can relate to so many of the different things that come up on that show, yeah. which actually is a kind of, a, it makes me question myself because especially there's an episode, if you've never seen, everyone's always against him though. I, I feel like he's yeah. always like treated, he is always, he's the always problem. treated harshly. If you've ever seen Curb Your Enthusiasm, if you haven't seen it, it's, you know, Larry David, creator of Seinfeld playing himself, a fictional version of himself, but it's essentially George Costanza where right. everything in the world he's, He's trying to cheat everyone. He thinks everyone's out to get him. He's always the jerk. He's always the guy in the wrong. I would say he's more for... like the guy that just tells it like it is. Yeah. And is very often, as he sees it, misunderstood. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I mean, there was the one episode where uh, he had the, uh, they went in and there was the lady who was sampling all of the ice cream and he got mad about that. He's like, you get one sample. You don't get to sample all the ice cream. Well, he sees the world in true. a very certain way. And when it doesn't uh, go that way, he, he doesn't like it. Doesn't it. conform. And to he that. also doesn't like the rules that everybody has. Yeah. Uh, for instance, there's an episode where there's a they forgot to get somebody a gift for their wedding, so they buy them this very nice bottle of wine, <laughs> and the couple is standing at the front door. And I'm sorry, we can't accept that. It, it's been a year. You just you can't accept gifts after a year. No, these are unwritten <laughs> rules that need to be talked about. They need to be discussed. Yeah. No, it's great. I am a big fan of that. Although you can only watch about three or four at a time. It's kind of like it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Where it just gets. You start okay, feeling you guys are terrible bad. people. Yeah, and, you start feeling bad about yourself. Right. But uh, very exciting. Curb Your Enthusiasm coming back, announced by HBO for a ninth season. Yeah, we hope, you know, Jeff Garland is coming back. And I all. would assume. I'm assuming. You'll have the whole Everybody's going to get on board. Yeah. It's, it's supposedly one of the funnest shoots because basically he doesn't write a script. He writes three pages or so of notes. Here are the scenarios we're going to get in. Here's kind of how I want you to react. And go. And then they just kind of ad lib from ad-lib. there. Yeah. It is. It really is it's one of the It's got to be one of the funnest shows to work on. Yeah. Oh, I would certainly. It's kind of like how we then do you our are... show, except <laughs> there's not even that. There's not, not even, even that. No. And we can't use the same language that they do. But that's true. still, it is great. So Curb Your Enthusiasm. Of course, all the back episodes are on HBO. Mother FCC. No, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Larry, you... No, I, can never, I can't even say some of that stuff. Yep. It is just good. It's full of liners that you can't repeat. Um... All right, moving on to some of the other things that are happening this week. Uh, finding 
Dory. Finding Coming Dory. out in theaters. Yes. And I made this, you know, shocking confession. Just absolutely <laughs> shocking information. Finding Dory is the sequel to Finding Nemo. Yeah. I have never seen Finding Nemo. Well, I thought everybody had seen it, but you obviously just don't have kids, and that's no. that makes sense. No. I mean, I don't have kids either, but I love animated movies. Yeah. So. Yeah, the original well, I've heard was it's a good movie. I've a surprise hit. It kind of put Pixar on the map. Now, Toy Story and Toy Story 2 came before that, and they were both huge hits, too. I did see that. A couple hundred million each. But Finding Nemo was everywhere. It made like over $350 million or somewhere around there. So now Finding Dory comes several years later. I think Nemo was out in 2003. So uh, okay, that this, sounds about yeah, right. around that. So this is a, a while. Um, star-studded cast. You got Ellen DeGeneres back, Ed O'Neill, Ty Burrell. Both of those guys are from Modern Family. Okay. Got Albert Brooks coming back. Uh, Caitlin Olsen's in it from Always Sunny. Eugene Levy, uh, Christopher Guest favorite. Yeah, Eugene movies. Levy. That seems He's to be hilarious. His, yeah, he Diane is. Keaton's in it, not Diane Lane, because we always get the two confused. Yeah, I actually, I have them mixed up in my mind right now. I don't know which one's which. But yeah, well, you'll find out. Okay, you'll, yeah. you'll find it. Yeah, it'll be a cartoon though, won't I? Not yeah, that's that. true. Okay, and it's supposed to make like a hundred to one hundred fifteen million dollars this weekend. So while Greg won't see it. Apparently, everyone else will. <laughs> <laughs> I've said this before, though. I'm not a first in the, the first weekend in the theater movie person. That's true. You know, except for Star Wars. I did that. You did say I that. I did say that. Yeah, that was about it. You're an, you're an agoraphobia. Yeah, probably. Never, yeah, maybe a little <laughs> bit. Eh, with that many people. Ugh. Yeah, but um, it should be fun. I mean, I'm okay. looking forward to it. It's, it's an interesting idea to have a sequel this long Yeah. after the first one. Yeah, although it's animated, so it doesn't really... Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, what does Finding Nemo get eaten or something at the end of the movie, or is there? I don't know. I'm, I'm some very kind of confused. Terrible spoiler. What's been does happening? Does it like, in turn Nemo? really dark? Like, what would <laughs> something in there? Yeah, Nemo gets killed at the end. I didn't ne- want to spoil it. Yeah. <laughs> He's caught at the end, and this is uh, the sequel. So, uh, all right, Finding Dory. So it's coming out this weekend, and That's right. you can go check that out. All right, breaking records, huh? Yeah. Breaking records. Well, I don't know about breaking records, but it's going to be probably the second biggest movie of the season, right behind Captain America. So okay. Be fun. All right. Um, something else that uh, is getting another sequel that yeah. I didn't. I don't even know anything about this except for Ryan brought this up, and it is a shot. Another one that's been a long time. One yeah. that I'm surprised they didn't just reboot. Right. And it is Beverly Hills Cop Four. Four. For those of you who now, don't know, there was a Beverly Hills Cop, Hills Cop Two and Three. Uh, I don't know that they were that well received. I think yeah, they made money. I don't know. I mean, that was the original one was Eddie Murphy, correct? And yeah, Eddie Murphy, once comic, now uh, whatever he is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sitting in a mansion somewhere and with all of his money, with all the lights turned off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't Doesn't know. Doesn't make a lot of appearances. This guy anymore. So he does not. And this movie's been bouncing around Hollywood forever. Um, they're su- they were initially scheduled to begin filming in 2015. It got shelved and pushed back. And now the news is that we've got um, – basically, they, they said the script wasn't very good. I, I think it's going to be really hard to write a good script for Beverly Hills Cop well, 4. Well, have they said who's going to start? Is, is so, Eddie Murphy going to be in it? I mean, we're, assuming, Foley, yeah, right? we're assuming so. I mean, otherwise you don't have a movie. Um, but now they've got Adil El Arby and Bilal Fala. Bilal Fala <laughs> are expected to take on – the directing duties. It was Brett Ratner who was doing it before. So, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was who again? Who's directing? <laughs> yeah, I didn't exactly. <laughs> They're co-directing it. And that's about all we know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hopefully Eddie Murphy shows up. Yeah. I mean, I would think you'd have to have Eddie Murphy, although this is one, uh, again, that I'm, I'm just kind of surprised they're not just rebooting. So who'd you, know, you see if like they 21 it? Jump Street or, yeah. you know, something Kevin Hart. Bustling. Probably another Kevin Hart. It would probably movie, be yeah. Kevin Hart. Yep. Kevin Hart fumbling around, <laughs> being confused about what's going on. Being hilariously I don't clumsy. know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That, I could definitely see that. Yeah. That'd be cool. That's All right. Kevin so Hart. that's a question for you guys. Should they be doing Beverly Hills Cop 4 or should they reboot it? And if so, who would play who would play that role? Axel Foley. Um, you know who would actually be good at that? Who's that? Jay Farrell. Jay Farrell from Saturday Night Live. He is I could see him. hilarious, but uh, so what are you saying? He's doing like his Eddie Murphy impression? <laughs> yeah, just the whole movie just doing an Eddie Murphy impression. <laughs> that mean, would be illegal, I would have to think. I think, I think he could pull that off. Yeah, well, maybe. That's true. I don't, <laughs> I guess I don't know much about He is hilarious, though, his. and he does an amazing Eddie Murphy. Actually, he all, does. every single time I've heard him do an impression, I've been blown away. Yeah. He is one of those guys that just sort of 
transforms. It, it's it's almost like it, you, you see it happen before your eyes and he becomes somebody else. Right. He's great. Totally underrated comic. See? There we go. I could see that. I just cast him in it. But I don't know about... I, cop I could forward. see it, but it would be absolutely ridiculous because he would have to do an Eddie Murphy impression the whole time. So it's already scheduled to begin filming. We th Yeah, we think so. Okay. No, it was... Ori no, oh, originally it was, was originally scheduled to be filming. Scheduled. Okay. Yeah. So we'll no, see what happens. No, they just got directors on board, yeah. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> we're getting a reboot with another one, whether we want or not. Yeah. A, a sequel. Uh, I think we still need a sequel to Short Circuit. That's what I would go for. That was my Wait, idea. I think they did do a sequel they to did, Short Circuit. They did. Short Circuit 2, but I mean, they need Short oh, you, Circuit 3. Oh, you mean 3. a reboot? A re no, not even a reboot. You could do, a, you could do another sequel. Okay. Yeah. I think that's uh, that would be my petition for an 80s movie to coming back, but... Yeah, you've talked about that. You're I really, into, I'm the really into the short circuit <laughs> series. You know, it really it hit me at a at a you know at an age and just yeah. really yeah really stuck touched with you me. right here. Really touched me. Yeah, you know the that robot, robot who finds emotions. The robot had feelings. That's you know, right. It was Staffony, but Johnny Five alive. Johnny Five. Uh, all right, moving on to some other things. Some television news now. This Mister uh, Writer with Digital Trends. Yeah, is an article that you just had out. I wrote it. I, I read it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you might have I been one of the few people that read it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was great. It was interesting, and it's something about how ads are changing in television. Yeah, so I wrote this big sort of analysis slash op ed piece about um, initially beginning with SNL, who um, you know the show is going to take out uh, thirty percent of their commercials next season, and they're going to replace them with six what's called native pods, which they're selling right now on the market to advertisers who will work, we think with the staff, but we don't know, but who will work together to create some sort of content that they'll then air on the show uh, that is paid, bought and paid for by ads, so by, by, by marketing companies, whatever it might be. So the content will be part of the regular show. Like when you watch it on demand, it won't be part of the commercial section. Well, we don't exactly or... know what it's going to look like, but yeah, it will okay. be not a breakaway commercial. It will be a part of the show. Now, this will this is be called as... sponsored content. Will this be as simple as like, you know, in a movie when they happen to go eat at Burger King or something like that? Or? Nope, because that is product placement. Okay. And product placement is, uh, we talk about, I talk about that in the piece as well. Uh, product placement has been exploding. Now, everybody knows the E.T. thing with uh, the Reese's Pieces. Um, yep. They put Reese's Pieces in E.T. and sales went through the roof. And oh, people yeah. often think of that as the main movie for product placement. But actually, product placement has been going on in Hollywood for at least since, basically since film has started. They think yeah. all the way back to the 20s, maybe even I mean, before that. I mean, that makes sense. But in the recent years, uh, loosening regulations and uh, more and more people going to streaming services and DVRs and stuff, they've had trouble figuring out how to get people to watch their ads. So they've been spending billions and billions of dollars on product placement. Sponsor content is sort of the next step. So not, only is is, not only is our product dropping in, but we are actually going to have control, hands-on control of part of the show, part of the movie, whatever it might be. Uh -huh. And the problem is, as I see it, is that uh, when you don't really know whether you're watching a TV show or a commercial, when that line starts to blur, I think it could be a really slippery slope. Okay. I mean, as you've seen consumerism progress, um, like I was saying, the product placement is going up and up. They expect it to double in a few years, um, over $12 billion, maybe even more than that, just on product placement. And, and so w when you start to see the lines blur like that, it just, I don't know, it can be disconcerting. Uh, are you, are, am I watching a TV show anymore or am I just watching one huge commercial some, yeah. subliminally <laughs> right. that I don't even know is trying to sell me something? By the end of it, I'm, am I just going to run out to Walmart and buy whatever the hell was there? Like, yeah. <laughs> people are really susceptible to uh, subliminal ads. So, so this, yeah, this will but be The interesting kind of thing was I wrote this piece and the first two comments I got on it, both of them were like, Sounds good to me. I hate commercials. Bring it on. Okay. I thought people were going to be all mad about it. But maybe But it not. turns out people don't seem to really care, at least okay. not in the same way that I am concerned about. Well, I guess if they make the content funny, if it's especially like SNL, you know. Yeah, well, that's the idea. Work. Like SNL already sort of does that. They have a Totino's pizza commercial that's absolutely hilarious. Mm -hmm. And the idea is maybe these, these products will, you know, just sort of clown on themselves because what do they care? As long as you're like, oh, that's funny. They were clowning on Totino's pizza rolls. I really want some Totino's pizza rolls. Yeah, right well, now. they're I delicious. Mean, that's all they care about. Yeah, <laughs> well, they're delicious. <laughs> and we have a bag right here. <laughs> Show the picture of the Totino's pizza rolls. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So that is going to be on. Uh, well, you can read the article right you now. Can read the article right now. Com. I'm interested to see if people even care about this. Um, you know, as as a person who's really into entertainment, a person who's written, you know, a lot of music and stuff like that. I think it's weird that art is sort of 
pop art, you mm -hmm. know, though it may be, is sort of mixing right in with marketing now. Okay. Um, to me, that's a slippery slope that I'm not all that excited about. Well, let's actually go from there talking about marketing. Maybe we'll skip to to this really quick. And uh, it has to do with some marketing that is happening based around Star Wars right now. And <laughs> it's worth just bringing up so that you are aware that this exists now, and we've for seen everyone out there. All kinds of Star Wars products. Star Wars. Just about everything you can think of yeah, until it's, now. It's marketed for everything, but this one yeah. is really bad. And it is <laughs> Star Wars has now is now going to be marketing its own cologne. Yes. Star Wars cologne. <laughs> <laughs> and the taglines are along the lines of "smell like smell like a Jedi," I believe it was. There, well, there's there's three flavors. We've got Jedi, Empire, and Amidala, which is the perfume. <laughs> the Jedi one is very scary to me because it has patchouli and musk. Oh God, <laughs> that is and horrible. I was not aware that Jedi's are hippies. It smells like college. I mean, it kind of makes sense. It smells <laughs> like your college dorm, <laughs> and or a Jedi. Uh, so this says the woody aromatic scent Star Wars Jedi exudes positive energy the start of this refreshing yet distinctly masculine scent experience Ew, a scent it's experience tangy That's notes bad. of mandarin paired with <laughs> spicy aromas of pink and black pepper scent experience and then saying tangy after it oh, is not a good combo i don't want to taste a jedi that's, so <laughs> that's, oh I, that's now i had now i've said Ooh, that is there a jedi in this room <laughs> <laughs> Also, Good I don't want to picture that Jedi smell like patchouli. Now it's going to ruin why the movie Jedi's, for me. Yeah, I know. Now every time I see a Jedi, I'm just going to think of patchouli, <laughs> patchouli drenched smells like fish <laughs> concert goers <laughs> trying to sell me a dirty joint that they found in the bottom of their car. So Jedi, bro. Cheeseburger. Chill out, man. <laughs> Well, anyway, these are not available in the United States right now. <laughs> They're only available in Germany. We're probably going to get sued by this company. But if you want to smell like a Jedi... <laughs> Apparently, as far as this company goes, you can do so. All right. Well, Plus, they come go. in a nice little lightsaber can. So, oh, that's well, there you go. Nice. It's a collector's can. That's right. Oh, that's terrible marketing. Anyway, Oof. moving <laughs> moving from that. So now everybody is aware of the Star Wars cologne and knowings uh, have to battle. And that is exactly the case. Well, let's let's move on to this other thing. Talk about some uh, Netflix things that are coming up and there's a bunch so that netflix. netflix is doing and a bunch of new shows are coming out there's a bunch that have been renewed and we're going to get to those here in a minute however uh some this is a term again that i do not know oh, oh this one this one that you have <laughs> brotrons a brotron right a so netflix has a new documentary so not only does netflix have a new series a rebooted voltron series right but in a synergetic move that can only be described as Netflixy, they're going to have a new documentary called Brotrons, which Bro are people that are super, super into Voltron and they're adults. See, now I know what now a, this comes from. A brony. A I know brony. what a brony is. Yes. I've heard about a brony before. Yeah. Well, I you, if you haven't seen what a brony, uh, there's, a, there's a documentary on bronies. <laughs> I had to watch it. <laughs> And just even that saying the term bronies is annoying, but it's yeah, bronies they're, is they're bad. adults who are very big fans of My uh, Little Pony. My Little Pony. Which is shocking. And it's and a real thing. Like there's conventions if you didn't know about you may be a brony if you're yeah. watching or listening to this. And uh. it spawned its own Bob Burgers episode. It's quite a thing. Yeah, and the documentary alone, there's like a there's a long documentary you can watch right. on Netflix. So this is You'll about learn all about it. Similar thing, but people that are super, super into Voltron. So they're so called bro, brotrons. brotrons. Now, um, my question is, if people are really into G.I. Joes, is that G.I. Bros? Brojo? Brojos? Yeah. Okay. Well, I like G.I. Joe. So I like G.I. Bro. G.I. Bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a G.I. Bro, man. Yeah. Brotrons. So stuff. there's going to be a documentary on the Brotrons. Yep. Okay. And it looks like it's going to be kind of funny. I, I think a lot of them are sort of tongue-in-cheek. They realize it's kind of ridiculous how into it they are. Yeah. So it looks like it's actually. I mean, more power too. Fun. Everybody's got their own thing. Yeah. I just when you coin a term for it, I don't know. That's yeah. Hopefully you don't like have that on your license plate. <laughs> Brotron. Somebody's <laughs> Brotron got that license plate. Brotron4l. Does anybody have that URL? I should snag that. Brotrons.com. Brotrons.com. Somebody's got to have that. Yeah, by it's now. too late now. Um, all right, so I, so I'm more interested though. That's that's funny. But what I'm really interested in is this new movie that Netflix uh, picked up called The Discovery. Yeah, no, now tell this me, is a really really interesting premise. So this is another one that they you know they're snagging all this content as and we'll talk about some more of it too. But Netflix, of course, always putting out content, and this is this is a full movie that they've yeah, and it's going to be Robert Redford, Jason Siegel, and Rooney Mara. And it's called the cast The Discovery. And it's called The Discovery. The premise is that human beings have basically confirmed the existence of an afterlife it's been scientifically proven okay how we don't know but basically in the movie now people are committing suicide to get to this since they to know there's an afterlife it. yeah 
So what would I guess the you know the basic question is what would life on Earth be like so this if is we not a actually comedy. knew that <laughs> there was going to be an afterlife and it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this sounds a little bit like uh, leftovers style. Yeah, you know, and I haven't actually dug into leftovers. I have a lot of friends that really like it, but it's I good. really haven't gotten too deep into it. It's there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's worth watching a, if you don't have anything else following. to watch. It's got quite a cult yeah. following. Yeah, it kind of loses itself a little bit. But um, but so the discovery, so... Yeah, and it's interesting. Uh, Jason Siegel seems like an interesting choice for this. Yeah. Um, I always thought he was like really a, just a goofy guy from his show, you know, mm-hmm. um, How I Met Your Mother. And then he's done, you know, the other a lot of the movies he does are really, you know, goofy sort of... He right. plays the dopey fun guy. Muppets or... Uh, yeah. Uh, or, but he did yeah, so an interview movies. with Mark Maron, who's one of my favorite podcasters that exists, one of the best interviews around. And uh, Jason Siegel has some, some darkness in there. Oh. Uh, he had an alcohol problem for a while. And uh, yeah, surprisingly deep. Okay. Guy. Really smart guy. He's a writer. But so, I, you know, at first he seems like an interesting choice for this movie, but I think he's going to bring something to it. Um, you know, he's... He's definitely got a dark side in there somewhere. So yeah, all right, should that, be cool. I I like that concept. Yeah. I will definitely watch that when it comes out. And so, do we have any idea when that's going to be? Well, it's supposed to be on 2017, 2017 and it will okay. get a theatrical run as well. So We're Netflix sure. is going to put it in the theaters also, yeah. and that's their plan for all their movies. Um, okay, you know, but they've had trouble with that because they've been boycotted by uh, the major theater chains when they try to do it. Yeah, but this is this one's going to get a theatrical run. So okay, we'll see how that works. All right, well, so that it's is Robert Redford. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, it's kind I'll of definitely watch it. I like that that kind of strange concept of a movie. So yeah, the it's, discovery. It's a really cool idea. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Um, just some other things that are coming up on Netflix. We can kind of hit. Uh, well, Orange is the New Black season four comes out this weekend, uh, June seventeenth. Yeah, if you're still watching that, I'm not. <laughs> But I know a lot of people are. I think it's still pretty popular. Yeah, so there's that that's coming up. Uh, Also, they announced the release date of Marco Polo Season 2. And nobody is watching that. I am so excited (laughs) about that. I am way... Are you? Have you been watching Marco Polo? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, wait. So you haven't watched it. I've seen one episode. And that was it, and you were out? But I'll tell you, I saw one episode in 4K HDR, and it was pretty mind-blowing. So for people that have a new TV, uh, Marco mm-hmm. Polo is one of the first of Netflix's series to be uh, produced in 4K. Okay. Um, I think it's even shot in 4K. And there's a whole lot of technical things that go into, you know, whether it's native 4K or whatever. But uh, the HDR, which which helps bring out the contrast and the colors, mm-hmm. looks pretty spectacular on okay. a good TV. So that, that was fun enough. And, you know, the premise is pretty cool. Yeah, the premise is cool. So it's Marco Polo. I mean, it's obviously... F- yeah mostly fictionalized but it's marco polo going to meet kublai khan and then right everything that's the first episode. chaos ensues right. yeah and this this season I, I, the trailer is out right now you can watch it if you were into marco polo it looks like they're just kind of continuing on somebody I think else you might be the only one watching i this might show. be the only one but i think it's great <laughs> so i like any kind of fictionalized historical drama that that's what'll get me which that's is cool kind idea. of like that's why you like narcos so which much. is why i like narcos, narcos is great i love narcos narcos too. season two and that's coming too as well yeah, yeah. and that's uh, so they announced narcos I season thought that two i didn't finish i didn't finish narcos i've watched like five episodes it's another one of those ones where i get to five and i'm like i'm gonna take a little break and then 17 other shows pop up and then you just i can't watch back. it all and i never got back to it uh, but I kind of figured that that was going to be a one-off. I thought, I mean, it looked like they were like sewing it up by the fifth episode. I thought that, well, spoilers uh, stuff in real was life, going down. Pablo Escobar died. Yeah, so that is a spoiler, spoiler alert, everybody. I'll, I'll leave you that. However, this <laughs> series, um, it's been long enough. You can watch it. And they, they yeah. already got the season two coming out. Of course. So, it, they don't tell the full story. It's like right. half of the story of okay. Pablo Escobar. So this well, it just season, looked like, it Narcos seemed like two everything was closing like, in on him. At, you know, at, even as I approached the end of last season, they were well, taking one of his compounds. And a lot um, of that, they stayed really true yeah. to what actually happened with him. Right. And, you know, the, that did happen. But that's oh, yeah. not the end of the end of the story apparently of he uh, yeah apparently he gathered his forces and, and came back fighting uh, yeah or, yes. or is this going to be a really boring season too or it's just him <laughs> sitting in a jungle somewhere for <laughs> a, a, 10 episodes yeah. and then oh and then yeah, you're dead. yeah that yeah. seems like that'd be hard to that make would that be hard happen. to keep it going. that'd be harder than writing the beverly hills cop four script right yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so narcos season two coming out in september uh, september 2nd some other things you know looking forward to with netflix uh all and right you're really excited about this uh should we do the between the cracks between 
between the staying cracks? on okay. Netflix. We staying really could just have a show just about Netflix. There's so much going on with them. I mean, it's they're ridiculous. kind of knocking it out of the park right now. And this is so we have this segment every week, and we like to get your feedback too. You can send an email podcast at digitaltrends.com, or if you're watching live, you can drop it in there in the uh, chat. And this is where we call it between the cracks, and it's just series that maybe people haven't had a chance to watch. You know, sure. there is so much television out there. There's so much going on, and you know, maybe you've missed it, or maybe it hasn't interested you, and you need another another take on it yeah and this is the one that i wanted to bring up and i know it's sports for some people that'll instantly be like nope i don't watch sports i right. want to deal with it but it is on netflix and it's the espm 30 for 30 documentaries and you do not and i'm going to emphasize this you do not need to be into sports to watch these because the sports side of it is the secondary side of these documentaries absolutely it's all about the human side of it yeah it's about people humans you know struggles and uh, you know crazy things that happen in in sports history they usually like to go 10 even 20 years back to sort of get a full broad spectrum you know mm -hmm. just check out every angle of it and and realize Wow, this happened, and there are so many crazy moments in sports. Well, and there's there's that all that have changed the his, you know, changed history in general. Yeah, and that's what these these things the way they work. So it originally started with thirty documentaries uh, celebrating ESPN's thirtieth year by thirty different directors, and they each kind of took a moment in sports or even in pop culture or in life that somehow intersected with sports. You know, there's one about the the earthquake in the Bay Area, you know, and how that interacted with the baseball right, games. Right in the middle of the series, that year. right in the middle of the series. Yeah. Uh, there are, I mean, there's just so many different ones. The, some of the ones that I would recommend if you want to get into them, Ice Cube directed one called Straight Out of L.A. that talks about that's got to be good. Yeah, it talks about you know them coming up with with N.W.A. but then also why they were wearing all the Raiders gear and everything. He explains why that is okay. and what it meant to them and what the Raiders meant to you know a lot of the population of L.A. You know, they were these rough and tumble guys and they were kind of like related to them. Yeah. Uh, I won't use some of the language they use, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's great. Straight out of LA. Um, yeah. you know, there's one on the Bad Boys, which is Detroit Pistons, which was good. There's even one on how the mob infiltrated um, college basketball. And with really? Henry, yeah, it's uh, with Henry Hill. Like Henry Hill from Goodfellas. From Goodfellas. The yeah. actual Henry Hill. Ray Liotta. Of, yeah. <laughs> only not Ray Liotta, but <laughs> but well, yeah. Yeah, it's it's about how they how they did it and they interview Henry Hill he's like yeah so you know we got these kids and that's uh, crazy. you scare them and then you know you give them some money and then what are they going to do yeah. and, you know and that's and it's then a we lot gamble and we make a ton of money yeah so ESPN yeah, and 30 we, for 30. we did an interview with uh, some of these directors and it's really interesting these you know these are really well done and they you know they work really hard to to give the full story uh, the yeah. interview that we did was the Orlando Magic yeah um, they're this, crazy this team that they had moment. with uh, you know Shaq and, and uh, Penny Shaq Hardaway pulling down rims mm -hmm. across the United States, uh, Shaq admitting that he was doing that on purpose. <laughs> right, yeah, that's what <laughs> he said. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's all that behind-the-scenes stuff, and you find out all about it. And uh, it's, there's, there's just some really, really good ones there. Brothers in Arms is another really great one I would recommend, although that's, that one gets kind of sad, but it's a, it's a great yeah. episode to watch. So nice. check those out, ESPN 30 for 30. Scroll through the different titles. You'll probably find something you'd be inter interested in and give it a shot. That's yeah. between the cracks for me. Um, and so uh, transitioning now to to an, another new show that came out. I, uh, if, if you want to right now, Showtime is giving a free preview of its new show, Roadies, uh, which is a Cameron Crowe joint. Okay. It's uh, written and directed by Cameron Crowe. I actually went ahead and watched the first episode. And what do you think of this? It's not great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no. So, you know, there are some cool... What's the premise? There are some cool elements to it. The premise is there are... Uh, this is a production team, basically. Uh, they are the roadies, but it's not just roadies. It's lighting people. It's audio engineers. It's the people that schedule all the events and the venues booked out. And basically, you're following along with them in this fictional rock band. Okay. Um, that's that's the basic premise. And anybody who's seen a lot of Cameron Crowe stuff knows that he's um, kind of sappy. Um, very he, he likes to sprinkle nostalgia dust throughout all of his productions. Mm -hmm. He's done some great movies. He's done uh, Jerry Maguire and my, my personal favorite, um, Almost Famous, right? which is sort of that perfect blend of, of nostalgia and comedy and brilliant writing. Um, the lead character is, is a fictionalized version of himself. Um, there's just a lot of great actors in it. However, for me, this one just didn't quite work. Okay. Um, the lead character, played by Imogen Poots, Imogen or Poots, Poots, which is a an interesting name. She is sort of this pixie girl that's like 
leaving the production and she doesn't know if she wants to stay and she's very dramatic. Um, there's a lot of heavy handedness okay. in the show. It's, it's a lot of, you should think music is magic and we're going to push it down your throat. So you think oh, so of the magic of, the of rock way. and roll. Yeah. And I don't know, as a, you know, a recovering musician myself, <laughs> I guess I'm a little jaded and that, that may have, you know, sort of uh, added to my you know disbelief, but it just didn't work for me. So and the roadies surprised. doesn't get it to you, but it is free it's got on some Showtime good actors. right now. Actually, yeah. So it's got Luke Wilson in it. Um, kind of his, he hasn't done much for a while. It's yeah. got Carla Giugino. She was, um, she's been in a lot of stuff, but she was like Vin's uh, manager for a while and entourage towards the end. Really mm, pretty. Okay. Uh, Vin ended up sleep. Vin, Vinny ended up sleeping with her. Okay. In the show. Spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been off for a while. <laughs> it's been off <laughs> since 2008. But uh, for me, the best character was actually Ron White, who is, if you know this guy, he's sort of that redneck comedian. Yeah. Uh-huh. He Smokes always has a cigar. cigar. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He does a really good job on it. He plays sort of the uh, hard, um, you know, hard headed with a heart of gold sort of tour manager guy. Or okay. He's not a manager, but he's like, you know, sort of the guy that's been around he, forever. That seems like it would be a good role he for him. He does a good job with it. And it's always interesting to see, you know, so this aspect of things. It's definitely something that hasn't you, really been done before. Would I don't you think. say it's worth giving it a shot since it's free? Or I mean, I think people should probably go out and, and check it out. But mm-hmm. I, you know, that's my take on it. It's okay. just not Cameron Crowe's finest hour. Okay. All right. So yeah. that is uh, Roadies on Showtime right now. Well, let's go to our final one, the highlight of the week. And this is one we've been talking about for a while I, yeah i've been saying i was going to check it out and watch it yes and, uh, and this is one of the in- most interesting yeah premises for a show even um, it's this comedian has always been sort of uh you know electric but like you either love her or hate her kind of thing yeah or, or either love her or just don't get it or don't get it yeah. yeah um and that is the uh netflix series lady dynamite starring maria bamford and now if you know maria bamford you've probably if once you see her you've probably seen her in something whether it's commercials or whether yeah. it's you know she did she was actually did a whole bunch of target commercials at one point she was like the target really person yeah, <laughs> yeah i didn't remember that yeah she's and, kind of like a counterculture comedian though yeah she's very alternative she's very, very very open about um her mental health disorders and different things that she's got which health. is interesting because yeah. i always feel like you know it's a fine line between being a hardcore comedian and just kind of a nut bar yeah i mean well <laughs> she's got a uh, bipolar disorder right now and i don't i don't mean to make fun of oh, that but there are so many comedians that are like right oh, no. on the edge she, that doesn't mean she's yeah. she's out there with her comedy anyway right. that, exactly. that's just a side thing but that's part of her comedy and it's part of the show yeah absolutely and so this so, so series, give us your take yeah yeah so this series it's a you know the whole series on netflix um it is bizarre <laughs> I'm going to warn you that. Well, I'm going to warn you right off. Just like her comedy. Just like her comedy. If you love her comedy, you will love this series. If you don't know her comedy, this may take you a minute to get into. Now, I started watching the first episode. I was honestly very confused because they take you in and out of what's happening on there. And she's essentially playing a fictionalized version of herself who has gotten out of treatment and is now trying to get back into the world and do comedy and do television again. But she of course, fails at everything yeah. hilariously and doesn't understand how to relate to people. And she's got all these overblown uh, versions of characters in her life, like her friend, the real estate agent, who's just way over the top, and her best friend who just rips on her all the time. You write right here, you kind of feel like you are on drugs while you're watching it. You do. And <laughs> it, you really Whether do. you're on drugs or not, it's going I'm assuming. To, yeah, yeah. And I was not. I was not. I will say this. Oh. But I will say it's... Oh. It, it's gonna take a couple of episodes. Now you need to watch. You need to watch two episodes <laughs> just to understand it. To understand the concept. And once I did that, I really started to like it. Well, and then the interesting really thing about this show is you interview a lot of comedians, and this is very much a comedian's show. It is. She's, comedians she's kind love of a comedian's comedian, and and everybody we've talked to so far just loves this show. Yeah, I mean, once once you kind of get on the page with what she's doing, then it starts to really make sense, yeah. and it's just basically her analyzing her own. You know, thoughts. Um, there's a lot of guest stars. Pat Oswalt, Anna Gostair, Ed Bigley Jr., Mark McGrath of Sugar Ray actually has a really big part for some reason. <laughs> they don't know who um, that is. Uh, yeah, they probably don't. Yeah. <laughs> More uh, like, just you probably fun. don't know of Sugar Ray of Entertainment Tonight. Was oh, yeah, that? that's right. That's probably it. Uh, Amy Poehler, the IMDb page is, is full right. of, of guest stars. Uh, I would say if you're really... People who will definitely like it are people who are into Mr. Show or maybe Tim and Eric... Then you were wow. Then yeah. you were gonna so love Tim it. and Eric is really out there. This doesn't go yeah. that far okay. out there. 
It's maybe Tim and Eric mis- mixed with Arrested Development. Okay. I would say that's again. It is Mitch Hurwitz that who's is, producing that's it. That's quite the pitch. Yeah, I would yeah. say that's what the cross. Very is. interesting. So it's it's definitely a unique show, and I would highly recommend checking it out. It may not be for you. Yeah. Or you may be surprised and and really get into it. Um, there it is. That's how I'll kind of have to leave it at that. It yeah. sounds like we've given them plenty of fun. It is. We've given you all these fun things. To Absolutely. Check out. So, and that's what we do here every week. We that's, talk that's, about, that's our job. That is our job. <laughs> to talk about these different things. So, um, I like it. Go ahead and uh, you know follow us on iTunes and Stitcher and everywhere like that. Download the show. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube. You can share that. We're here usually every Friday at uh, two p.m. So we'll be back next Friday. 2 p.m. for another episode. Send us an email, podcast at digitaltrends.com. Let us know what you would think would be a good, like, between the cracks, something that you watch that nobody else watches that you think needs to get some more publicity or, or other people need to check out. Let Absolutely. us know those things. Always looking for ideas. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. We see will you next be back week. Uh, next week with another episode. Ba-ding.